Hello and welcome back. You're watching Park City Television. I am joined once again by Steve Gennard. He is the wing leader of the Utah Commemorative Air Force. And we're here at the Aviation Museum for the CAF here in Heber Valley. And we're doing an overview of this incredible piece of work that you guys have here. How long has the museum been here? Uh, we've been in this location for about almost six years now in this hangar, uh, which we built for the purpose of having this museum excuse me and uh, so we are in our sixth year in this location wonderful let's do an overview of all of the incredible things and in, in history that you really walk through being in here all right our uh, the commemorative air force is an organization that focuses on world war two world war two world war two so most of the artifacts we have on display here are from the World War II era, and we think we have a very nice collection. We have some things that are uh, virtually unique, so uh, some of the wonderful museums around the country uh, uh, don't have some of the things that we have here. So we're a small museum, but we think we have an excellent uh, collection, and we invite all of you to come to Heber City to the airport and see what we have. Uh, we do uh, try to focus on the histories of some of the veterans that we met uh, when we began uh, to develop this museum, who are Utah residents, uh, World War II veterans, uh, many of whom have passed on in the last five years uh, because, as you know, our World War II veterans are 90 years old or older now if they're still alive. Uh, but because we met these particular veterans and we have their artifact, that the things that they gave us from their own personal uh, experience in the war, this museum is very personal to us, uh, those of us who are involved with it. Uh, we knew these people, we know their stories, we want to pass those stories along. Uh, to all of you, to the public, uh, uh, and uh, so we have their displays set up to, to help us do that. Uh, one of our veterans was a combat glider pilot, a very little known part of World War II. Uh, the combat gliders flew into Normandy on D-Day carrying troops and equipment like Jeeps and howitzers and so on. And we have a nice display on combat gliders. Uh, we had a veteran who was a fighter pilot who flew P-40s in the Mediterranean theater and then and went from North Africa into Italy uh, during that part of the war and then served in the China-Burma-India theater as a pilot uh, for his second tour of duty. We had veterans who flew B-17 bombers, crewed on B-24 bombers. Uh, so we have artifacts uh, from uh, from them, one of them a, a mangled piston out of the engine in his B-17 when he was shot by anti-aircraft fire and uh, the, flew the airplane from Germany back to England with one of his engines uh, inoperative, and we have the piston out of the actual piston out of that engine uh, on display here. Uh, we, again, primarily focus on World War II. We do have some artifacts in the museum that are post-World War II and into the jet era for the Air Force and the Navy. Uh, we have several pilots associated with the museum, um, most with military backgrounds. I was an Air Force pilot. Uh, we have several Navy pilots, so we do have, you know, we knock heads occasionally, uh, but uh, uh, we do have a passionate group uh, of people here who think it's very important to honor the legacy of our World War II veterans, uh, particularly those uh, involved in aviation. This includes the men who flew combat, it includes the women who flew all of these airplanes. They played a vital role in World War II, uh, delivering airplanes from the manufacturers to the various military Air Force bases and Navy bases, flew them to Europe, to uh, uh, flew bombers to Europe so that uh, the pilots could then fly them in combat over Germany, France and Germany. And uh, so we honor them too, that there were approximately 3,000 women who were trained to fly during World War II and they flew everything in the U.S. inventory. Uh, and uh, 
So we honored them as well. Uh, and all of the crewmen who maintained the airplanes uh, in between missions. Uh, these are people that, uh, the people that Tom Brokaw called the greatest generation and we concur. We do not want them to be forgotten. That is why we are here and that's why we want you to come visit us in Heber City at, a, at our museum and to, to see these artifacts, learn the history behind them and something about the people who uh, provide us with these items and uh, whose memory we will not let be forgotten. Uh, in our uh, museum here in Heber City, uh, Commemorative Air Force, the Utah wing of the CAF, uh, we have currently on display uh, three aircraft. Uh, one is a North American AT-6 Texan. The AT in military uh, designation stood for Advanced Trainer. And it was uh, 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 the last airplane uh, that the student pilots flew before earning their wings. Uh, those that were going on to fly fighters flew the AT-6 uh, and got their gunnery training formation air-to-air uh, -air combat training in the, in the T-6. So we have the T-6 here in the museum. We also have a Stearman biplane PT-17, the PT meaning primary trainer. So it was the first airplane the guys flew. They got off a train at an airbase somewhere, had never been in an airplane in their lives, and the first airplane they flew was this Stearman that we have on display here. Uh, we also have, in recognition of our Chinese allies from World War II, a Chinese Air Force trainer called a CJ-6. Uh, so that is in the museum. Uh, we will have uh, various times through the summer on display a World War II medium bomber, a twin-engine Navy bomber called the PV-2 Harpoon. Uh, it is currently in Wendover, but it will be here in Heber City uh, off and on through the summer. So you may get to see that airplane as well, parked right outside our museum. Uh, these aircraft are all airworthy. We do fly them. We have rides available. If you would like to ride in one of these airplanes for a donation uh, to the organization, we will take you for a ride in one of these iconic aircraft. And uh, so we hope you'll be interested in doing that with us. You will. Uh, the Stearman is an open cockpit biplane. If you've never flown in an op open cockpit airplane, you'll have a grin on your face that, that'll last for a week after you after your ride. So please come uh, also and see us and, and uh, fly with us in our airplanes. Well said. I think we'll just leave it at that. Thank you so much, Steve. A pleasure to be with you and remind us where uh, we can go online. You also have your hours and dates of operation, right? Yes, uh, we will through the uh, uh, from now through October we will be open Friday Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. but we're available every day of the week if you go online and uh, find our uh, phone number and give us a call and want to come on a Tuesday we will be here and we will open the museum for you so we are uh, and on most days, if you drive in and give us a call, I'm at the airport somewhere, so I can be here in a minute or two minutes. You like being here just a little bit. I like being <laughs> here a lot. Uh, and I do have a hangar of my own on the other end of the airport. So I'm on the airport somewhere. I'm either in the museum or in my hangar, but I can be in the museum right. in two minutes. So please come any day of the week, give us a call and we will be here or you can just come in on the, on the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday when we are normally open and uh, we would be happy to have you and want to see you, want you to come see us. Wonderful. Steve, thank you so much for the warm welcome and I think we'd like to add on to that too. Thank you so much to all of our servicemen and women out there and the legacies that they've left and what, what a wonderful way to honor them by remembering those very special stories. And thank you very much. Sure. We appreciate it. And uh, again, we do invite everyone to to please come see us.